Rick Rule. Rick Rule is a favorite of the Real Vision community. If you'd like to meet Rick and get a masterclass from the master himself, you'll want to head to the Rick Rule Symposium on Natural Resource Investing in Florida, July 23 to 27. You'll get access to industry insiders, elite bullion dealers, gold council members, and uranium pros. Just head over to realvision.com slash rick for tickets. That's realvision.com slash rick. Welcome to Real Vision Daily Briefing. It's Monday, July 17, 2023. I'm Ash Bennington. If you saw Real Vision Crypto Daily Briefing today at noon, you get to hear this twice. The good news is it's as true at 4 p.m. as it was at noon today. I started out that show talking about something that I really care a great deal about. That, of course, is Real Vision. You guys know that Real Vision is more than just a job to me. It's a huge part of my life. It's an honor to get to bring you this content. It's an honor to get to chat with you almost every day here. One of the amazing things about Real Vision is that we're constantly forcing ourselves to grow, always experimenting with new things. We've all been blown away by a response to Raoul's most recent video, the past, present, and future of Real Vision. If you're an RV member and you haven't seen it yet, go check it out on the platform. It's called, as I said, the past, present, and future of Real Vision. This is all about our platform, our roadmap for the future, and things that we're going to be implementing here in the coming months. Let me just read to you a couple of comments from some of our Real Vision members about exactly that. This is in response to that video that I mentioned, the past, present, and future of Real Vision. From Kevin K. Couldn't be more proud of all the innovation and risks RV is taking to be a leader. Will be a lifelong RVer. Thanks, Kevin. From Milos, checking my pulse. Platform of my dreams, Kevin says. Thank you, RV. Happy to be a member. Thanks, Milos. And finally, from Real Vision contributor David S. It makes my head spin. Real Vision is going mission exponential. That's from DLS, a great contributor here at Real Vision. Always a pleasure to hear from him as well. I also want to talk to you a little bit about some features that we're going to be implementing. Uh, we're going to feature a new feature every day, telling you about what's happening on the platform in the coming months. Today, we're talking about the networking features on Real Vision's new platform. This is a really interesting one and something that I'm really passionate about. I chose to talk about this one first because I think it's just so interesting. This is going to give us, Real Vision staff and Real Vision members, the ability to connect in new ways. You know, the way comments work now on the Real Vision platform, you can leave a comment, but there isn't really any interactivity. Well, this networking feature is all about interactivity, the ability to engage in conversations, to continue to talk to other Real Vision members, to talk to Real Vision staff. I'm extremely excited about this. I think it's gonna be really, really cool. Here's why this matters to you. Here's specifically what's gonna happen next. Prices at Real Vision, like a lot of other things in our economy, you know that if you watch this show, are about to go up. If you're already a Real Vision member, you can lock in your current membership at up to 50% off or level up uh, to a new higher level of membership uh, before July 24th. Here's where you can go to check all of this out, realvision.com forward slash level up, all lowercase. That's realvision.com forward slash level up, all lowercase. Do check it out. Just go and take a look at it. Figure out what platform, uh, excuse me, uh, what level is right for you. You can get all of the information there on that page. I think you'll find it extremely helpful. Well, with all that said, we get down to brass tacks for today. And the question is this, will earnings cool down this rally? I'm joined today by Dale Pinker, trading coach at TradingGate Hub. Dale, welcome to Real Vision Daily Briefing. Really great to meet you, Ash, and how fortunate you are to love what you do and where you do it. Congratulations on that. Thanks, Dale. I really am a very lucky man. I should have said welcome back to Real Vision Daily Briefing. You've been on this show uh, many times before. It's the first time on with me, uh, but it's really a pleasure to have you. Dale, first question, the floor is yours. Tell us big picture where you think we are right now in terms of markets and the economy. Thanks, Ash. Uh, I decided to start with the dollar. Uh, because there's a lot of talk, you know, we have the BRIC currency coming at the end of August, uh, where, you know, we have uh, people talking about with good inflation news, the Fed's going to pivot and ease, and that's going to work to the detriment of the dollar. And then if you're a classic technician, you look at the dollar chart right here, you had that big break from 114 to about par in big round numbers and moved sideways for many months. And what happened last week, uh, classical technicians would call a breakdown. 
And this is how they get some of their lower objectives is you just take 1400 points and the breakdown happens at par 50 and subtract 1400 points from there. And you're talking about 85 and a half or so in the dollar index. So that's the way conventional people would look at it. Um, I, early on in my career, used to listen to a guy named Joe Granville, and one of his expressions was, uh, it's not with us anymore, is that is what is most obvious is obviously wrong. Although I am very surprised at times uh, how the obvious works, uh, but the obvious position for uh, the dollar right now is bearish. People have been bearish since the top. We've been hearing about the death and destruction of the dollar my whole career. And as you could tell, I've, I've been doing it a few years. So uh, the action I'd be looking for uh, would be for it to do a little work here for a couple of weeks. But if you see the red line is the 200 week moving average in the dollar. So I'm going to be getting long against that. Um, that comes in at the 98 level and risk a weekly close underneath. So I actually think that there's going to be uh, not just a low and a little bounce, but a pretty good rally. You know, we really never had a shakeout of the bearishness in the dollar since the top. So I think that uh, people at times, uh, you know, positioning gets too extreme one way. And uh, can you think of one reason yourself, Ash, uh, you've been around markets for a while, why you would want to be long the dollar? Uh, well, you know, it's a great question. I think that the, the big open uh, question right now is where we're going in terms of central bank policy and the questions uh, that we see in front of us about inflation. So I would kind of flip that one back to you and ask, uh, Dale, what do you think uh, the implications are for where we are right now from inflation. Obviously, we're down now uh, about a third on CPI of where we were at peak around 3%, still above uh, the 2% target, uh, but significantly below 9%. What does that mean for the Fed? And what are those then implications for DXY and other metrics of the dollar? I think SPX means more than CPI to the Fed. And uh, uh, people will be surprised that the Fed isn't going to like uh, non-inflationary growth, which uh, we should be embracing with both hands. But the numbers we've been getting last year are against comps. It's like a stock. If you had bad earnings for two, three years, uh, just a small beat is a big deal. So uh, the comps of inflation, you know, we, you know, we're talking about we had $100 oil, we had $12 wheat, every commodity market a year ago was higher. So to have these comps of uh, 2%, 3% inflation, doesn't mean that we're back to where we were. It means we're not accelerating from that level. And right. uh, recently some commodities have started to turn up. And I still think even though yields could drop a little bit more like the 10 year to maybe 360, 350, that we'll be looking at new highs in the 10 year yield going into year end. So uh, that's my take on yields and the Fed is gonna go um, at least once, maybe enough, maybe twice. Let me ask you about this. You, you make this point and it's a very interesting one that the Fed cares more about the S&P 500 than they do about CPI. Obviously that's something that at least in theory, in theory is outside of their statutory mandate. Uh, S&P 500 up, call it 18 and a quarter, 18 and a half percent on the year, uh, red hot relative to historical performance, uh, but you see decelerating inflation. When you see those two things, uh, I guess in your view, kind of coming into conflict with each other, uh, when you have this notion uh, of, of non-inflationary growth, uh, that would seem to be something that the Fed would like. H how do you think about that? How do you weigh those sort of two separate legs? Well, I, I believe that uh, the Fed is uh, going to induce the recession. They, they want a recession and they're going to induce it. And the market being at these levels gives the Fed room to keep tightening. If the market was under duress, it would be a different story. But with right. the market not under duress, um, it gives them room to go ahead and make sure that it's not like the 70s where we had many uh, inter-cycle peaks of inflation during the 70s before we got to the rip-roaring part of the inflation cycle 
in the 70s. So the Fed had to start and stop and start and stop three times before Volcker got very draconian. And right. uh, I believe Paul has this in his head and right. uh, it doesn't want to repeat that. And he's going to, you know, overshoot to that side, thinking he could self-correct when things begin to weaken. In fact, while we're uh, picking up on your history lesson there, one of the things that we hear very often uh, is that this Fed Chair, Jay Powell, has learned the lesson of Arthur Burns, uh, who was involved in yep. that stutter step hike of rates uh, that did not did not contain inflation in the 1970s. Right. That's right. And uh, that's the uh, what he doesn't want to repeat, uh, although his legacy right. will uh, not be for um, not being able to contain inflation. His legacy will be a massive deflation and liquidity crisis and risk off in many markets of liquidity. The Fed will cause this liquidity event. And um, they have room. I think they're going in July. There are many other factors that could uh, lead to a weakening stock market. Let's see how earnings are, how they come in next year. We had great bank earnings Friday. They sold into them. They're rallying today, but uh, I, I also think that the dollar could be part of it. And one thing that people are really not taking into consideration, Ash, is Ukraine. Right. Things are escalating. Uh, you know, there could be F-15s uh, in that theater. Okay, there are cluster bombs in that theater. Um, there's a counteroffensive going on. Uh, things, uh, I don't believe Russia is going to sit there and not escalate. And I'm not sure what they're going to do to escalate, uh, but I, I hope it's not nuclear. But it, it could be. I don't think that um, the war that everyone just, you know, trade your S&Ps and trade your earnings, an event right. like that uh, would make me uncomfortable being in Euro. Um, you know, right. it is on their continent. We're separated by an ocean. So I think the euro peaks at about uh, 113, 113.50. Uh, I'd like to see it pull back because just like the dollar, it's confirming. I think cable peaks at 32 and a half, 133. Um, and we get a big dollar rally that's going to come in around the same time as risk off. What mm -hmm. changed last week and the big story in FX rather than the dollar is the action in the yen. So we had over an 800 pip decline in a week. Um, that's big in a week. Uh, I remember before we were coming off, uh, um, I got was advising people to short it over 44. Uh, those sales look pretty good here. And people were starting to think that they may have to intervene again when we were trading 145. And everyone was waiting for the BOJ uh, to be checking rates uh, because 149 looked like a layup. And I think what's changing there is it traded pretty much in line with the Nikkei. And I do believe that the market is smelling that they're going to, the Japanese, uh, the BOJ, they're going to come off yield control. And they're the, they're the problem with the yen appreciating. And if you look at it, I'd sell any rip to 141 or so, 142. I think that we're gonna see at least uh, the low 130s. And if we have a quality from the break that we had from 152, um, you could be talking about a 120 US dollar yen. And the problem with that is it's a carry, carry trade currency. Okay, so how can the market break? Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, traders uh, use other low interest rate currencies to fund their trade. So as the yen appreciates and the yen's bouncing a bit today, but if we get another wave down, I think that's going to coincide with a peak in the market uh, as carry trades get more expensive to hold because right. of, the, uh, and you know, there was a time the yen was a safe haven currency. And I think we're going to get right. a taste of that again. Hey, Dale, let me pick up on that thought of safe havens. I want to talk a little bit here about gold, particularly in relation uh, to a show on Real Vision buy side meets sell side, how, tr how to trade recession risk. Uh, this is Andreas Steno-Larsen chatting with Hugh Hendry 
uh, aired July 14th. Uh, that is, of course, three days ago. Let's take a look at that show. And then, you know, to quote, to quote the gospel of the great, the great, the great, the genius of, you know, Stan, <laughs> um, there, are, there are always asset classes in a, in a bull market. There's always something going up. You know, and he, he'll take you through the 1970s. And was it defense stocks? Was it oil stocks? Was it, you know, consumer non-discretionary? There's, there's always something. Maybe, it's, maybe it is AI, you know. Stan's got an allocation there. There'll, there'll certainly be a handful of, if, you know, if you're a stock guy, there'll be a handful of areas um, which, which will continue to rise. Now, the, con the only concern I have is that, mm, you know, it's like I... I, you have to own gold, but I mentioned gold in the sense that um, I don't like investing in perceived um, riskless uh, or, or perceived assets which perform well in recessions before the liquidity event. All right, Dale, talking about safe havens and gold, uh, gold still not above the 2000 mark, uh, something of a psychological level there. I thought Hugh Hendry ended this clip in a very interesting way uh, by saying, essentially, he doesn't like buying perceived riskless assets until bef after the liquidity event, never before. Interesting point. Yeah, and I agree with you. And, uh, you know, that liquidity event that he's talking about is probably a, a stock market correction with a, a strong dollar. Uh, risk aversion. Uh, I'd like to make the point that the VIX hasn't made a new low since uh, the solstice on June 21st. But gold, uh, you have to be pretty disappointed. Um, silver was a trade. Uh, I got long around 2242 if you follow my work at tradegatehub.com and I'm out. So uh, I think gold could rally to 1970, maybe 2000. But I think that they're between the combination of a dollar rally and a risk off event that gold could trade at 1800 or lower. And uh, that's probably when he will be interested in it, you know, maybe even under 1800. Silver, I think, has a hard time between here and 2530 or so. I don't think the um, silver squeeze guys are going to be rewarded. But I do think this next break, should it happen, and it's across the board, you know, everything goes up and down together with the dollar. So when the dollar's bad, you could buy the world. And when the dollar turns good, not much else is. Even the kitchen sink will be sold to raise cash. Okay, so the dollar is really the fulcrum of the wheel. Uh, so pay attention to that and uh, go, the gold shares, you know, we rallied from 30 to 32. We could go 33. I think GDX could trade 27. And uh, I think it's maybe a month or two away, uh, August, September, more towards September. Is, I think I'll be uh, getting ready to buy these metals and the miners um, lower than we are here. Mm. Time will tell. Joe, let me bring together uh, two points uh, that you've made on this show, and I'm curious how they hash together in your mind, uh, which is this idea of what's happening in Europe, in Ukraine, as almost, I, I mean, I heard you describe it as kind of the ultimate tail risk uh, for these markets. Uh, what do you think the implications of the cross currents are between Ukraine and gold? Well, uh, I think that there uh, could be a lot of gold being sold to finance the war. I mean, Russia uh, has people in Africa that uh, are taking gold for their oil. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think that gold is going to be a safe haven. I, I tie risk more than gold. You would think that if things escalated, uh, gold would go higher, but we might get risk off first. Uh, I really think the big, biggest tail risk is not Ukraine, but China, uh, not that they're launching the new currency, the BRIC new currency backed by gold. I hope that that's all they're launching in August. That's if you know what I mean. That's, I think I do know what you mean, and it's quite ominous. Why don't you unpack it? Uh, you know, I, I think that they're getting ready. And, you know, it's not if, it's when. And, you know, I mean, when our president is talking about we're low on munitions, to justify 
sending cluster munitions to Ukraine uh, isn't exactly a message of strength that we're sending to the world. Um, we're having all kinds of problems with our military. Uh, uh, it's becoming political just to get um, appointments made. Uh, Congress is stopping that. Uh, I think that uh, our enemies are looking at what's happening here and think that it might be a good time to go. Um, and probably Russia would also like to see Joe Biden not win another term. So I think that's, uh, you know, part of what they had the timing. I think 24 is going to be a real rough year, Ash, and right. that we're setting the stage the last half of this year for a pretty substantial bear market in in equities and huge bull markets and things like grains. I'm very bullish on the grain market. The Fed can't print corn or <laughs> beans. And when you talk about gold, beans are protein gold. So I really like the agricultural commodities in the super cycle in the 70s. Um, they were stars and I think they are too. Um, all you have to do is look at the weather map all across uh, the globe. And I talked about uh, Grande El Nino last time I was here and beans have really started to rally. Um, Russia is not going to extend the grain deal for um, uh, Ukrainians to get their wheat out of there. And yep. there aren't large carryovers. Uh, there are years where we have stockpiles. I, I tell everyone, go build a silo. Not, to, not a bomb shelter, a silo to store wheat and grain. And I think it's a, you know, could be a great investment and be able to help others when things get lean. Seven years of plenty, seven years of naught. I think we're heading in the second direction. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why it's so great to have folks on who've been watching these markets for as long as you have, Dale. Uh, when you talk about the grain super cycle, a uh, soft commodity super cycle in the 1970s uh, that was concomitant with the inflation that we saw during that period of time. It's such an interesting take uh, on potentially framing out how this market might shake out in the future. Dale, we've got about uh, two, three minutes left here before we're going to go to questions. Uh, you've got three charts. You call them the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, NVIDIA, AMD, Advanced Micro Devices, and the Invesco KBW Bank ETF. Uh, I leave it to you. Which one of those charts is most compelling to you? Uh, well, the, the Comet, the good. Uh, and even the good is starting to show signs of uh, not confirming at new highs. Uh, usually the leader making new highs. The market's been ma made a new high today without NVIDIA. I'm not saying it can't probe that uh, 480 level. Sometimes you could get a fractal up there, but this is a pretty classic in form, uh, three drive to a top formation. And I think that the bull should be rooting for me to be right so they could buy NVIDIA back into that gap around 320. So right, I'm looking for a pretty big shakeout. And uh, uh, AMD is not making new highs. The banks still do not look good to me, especially the regionals. And even Apple making new highs today, Microsoft, Amazon, they're all putting in non-confirmation highs. So hmm. be careful. It doesn't mean you have to go out and short, but it is a sign to you know take something off the table up here and book profits. If you're not aggressive, there's nothing wrong with bringing the register when momentum is not confirming price. Del, talking about Apple, first question comes to us from Luke from the Real Vision website. He says, Coach, love your thoughts on Apple, price targets, and time frame. Well, we're making new highs here. And uh, I think that during uh, the kind of correction that I'm looking for, first uh, order of business would be to close under 180 and then 170. But I could make a case in a, a bear market for 120. Next question from Robert from the Real Vision website. Dale, great call, he says, on USD JPY. You call the peak at 140 to 143 and then a short, which has worked extremely well, he says. Do you see a continuation of the slide here? And what do you make of Euro US dollar strength? Okay, uh, yes, uh, I think that the yen is a short on strength. 
141 is a level I'll be looking at that's about halfway back from a recent high of 45 to 38. Euro should pull back a little bit here and then make an attempt at new highs. Uh, I don't have any divergences there, but I think the euro is going to peak uh, about 113 to 114 and then trade back near parity. Here's a question from Trillion X Macro from YouTube. I think it's a question you've partially answered, but I'm going to throw it out anyway because I think it's a good one. Dale, do you think we are in the middle of a melt up of the S&P 500 and that it is part of financial repression to keep long term yield artificially low? It's definitely a melt up. And uh, whether it's financial repression, I think the Fed was going to answer your question in a few weeks. So, um, uh, in, in melt-ups, you never know how, how wide the rubber band can stretch, but uh, I'd be surprised to see S&Ps close over 4,600. If, if that's the case, then okay, 5,400 new all-time highs. This is Custard's last stand for the bears. <laughs> right in here. Nelson Babe on YouTube, do you think the BOJ will abandon your yield curve control given your USD JPY view? If not, how do they balance the two amid inflation above the target? I think they're going to make the adjustment and abandon yield control, tweak it. Next question uh, comes to us from SBD758 from YouTube. Does Dale believe in an H2 oil rally? You're talking about second half WTI on my screen right now, trading a little bit, a few clicks north of 74 bucks. No, I could see, you know, 79, maybe mid 80s, but I don't think that was the major bottom in oil. I think it'll get caught up in risk off. I think China's still weak. You saw the numbers here. Uh, copper under pressure today. Uh, the China reopening needs to be restarted. They need to do more aggressive fiscal stimulus here. And um, I'm not confident in China. And that's why I'm most worried about what they do. Because uh, if the economy is bad, that's when dictators wag the tail and get people's attention on something like an enemy or a military geopolitical win because they can't do it economically. Yeah, sobering words. Dale, we've covered a tremendous amount of ground here, talked about a lot of different areas, answered a lot of questions. I wanted to give you the opportunity to stitch it all together. Final thoughts, key takeaways that you'd like to leave our viewers and listeners with. Don't get too bared up on the dollar down here. I'm not saying that the bears can't be right, but uh, uh, if you don't like to bottom pick a market, you can just sit and wait for closes, not interday trades, back above par 50, which will make this whole breakdown turn out to be a breakout failure. You don't have to try and catch a knife like I do, or you know, you'll know you look like me when you're 40. So you can just wait for the market to negate the recent negative action by getting back above par and a half. It's just my nature to anticipate it and look for entries to do so before it happens. Dale, great show. I really enjoyed this conversation. You are a man who is not afraid to make a call. Really appreciate that. Deeply respect it. Thank you so much for joining us. Really great meeting you, Ash. Thank you. And uh, congratulations on I've watched Real Vision from the beginning. Uh, much luck with uh, and success with the new website. And what a great idea for people to be able to interact with each other. And because it's all about a community. And yeah. you have to talk to each other to have a community. Uh, but I don't envy anyone who has to moderate it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, said, you said that so well. I feel like I'm about to be out of a job. That was perfect. That's exactly what I was thinking. Well, you'll probably be moderating it. So uh, anyway, Ash, uh, really nice meeting you. Thanks for inviting me. Well, thanks for joining us. And thank you all for listening or watching the show. Real Vision Daily Briefing returns tomorrow, same time, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Have a great afternoon, everybody. I can't tell if I'm live or not. Welcome to the latest episode of I Don't Know What The Fuck I'm Doing. I've got no idea what I'm about to 
talk about or present, but we'll give it a go. No producers, no anybody. They came on beforehand, threw me into the deep end, so I don't really know what's going on. Sorry, I need to get rid of my wife who's on the call. Let's hope she doesn't shout at me. Sorry, everyone. I can't tell I'm alive. Ah. I hope I've entertained you. I've done my song and dance. Um, you fuckers need to subscribe, please. Rick Rule is a favorite in the Real Vision community. If you'd like to meet up with Rick and get a master class from the master himself, you'll want to head to the Rick Rule Symposium on Natural Resource Investing in Florida, July 23rd to the 27th. You'll get access to industry insiders, elite bullion dealers, gold council members, and uranium pros. Just head over to realvision.com forward slash Rick.